I'm sure all of us have read fairy stories while we were little children. Or maybe our mothers and fathers have read for us bedtime stories. And all those stories began like this. Once upon a time, and its story concluded by saying, and they lived happily ever after. God in his providence gave us the story of Jacob and Joseph to read. And we begin the story once upon a time, the first day when we celebrated the Mass of the Holy Spirit, we made a small adjustment in the reading. But the reading of that day was the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel. And that story, perhaps, has got something to say for each and every one of us and for our congregation and for the days that we have gone through this chapter, wrestling with God. At the end of that story, Jacob comes out with a blessing. And this evening, I want to ask you, have you wrestled with God during this week? Do you feel that you're going back to your convent with a blessing in your heart? With a blessing to give the other sisters as well? Yes. That God has blessed us with a team? Once upon a time, every story begins like that. And then we also began to see the twists and turns in the life of the people of Israel, Joseph and his brothers. And I'm sure you remember, we spoke about God being able to write straight on the crooked lines of our life. During this past week, were you able to discover the crooked lines of our life? Were you able to see how God has been writing straight in spite of our human crookedness, in spite of all the challenges that we face. For me, it's a miracle that even in this COVID time, we were able to conduct this chapter and bring it to a fruitful conclusion. I had my own fears and apprehensions. And I know your mother and others, Sister Andrews, we were all struggling to find suitable dates, but God continues to ride straight on the crooked lines of our life. And that should help us, that should assure us, no matter how crooked we are, God knows to make straight every crooked line in our life. How Joseph became a powerful instrument in the hands of God to ensure that his brothers and their families would be saved from the famine and continue the generation of the people of Israel. And today when we read, when we saw the reading, hardly Jacob closes his eyes in sleep and the brothers begin once again their crookedness, their twisting and turning of the stories of life. But once again we began to see the confirmation of God who continues to assure us that his people will always be protected no matter what. And today the promise of Joseph to his brothers, do not be afraid, I will take care of you. I will feed you and your children and your grandchildren. And thus the story continued. Today is also a strange reading for us in a particular way. The story which began once upon a time, Jacob concludes his story happily ever after. He is united with his sons, particularly his dear son Joseph. He dies in his arms. He dies in the company of his whole family. And he is buried in the place of his forefathers. And Joseph too, a long life, and as it is given to us in the text, he saw his sons and grandsons 
and children's children, in biblical terms, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. During these days, all of you were, you know, Mother Nyana Ma, Mother Nyana Ma, Mother Nyana Ma, Mother Nyana Ma. And I'm sure today, she's sitting and watching her children, her children's children, and children's children, and children's children, and thanking God for the blessings that he has given her in his, her life and for the blessings that he is giving you in your life. And therefore, my hope and prayer for you is that God may continue to bless your congregation with good, committed, solid vocations and that you may continue in the tradition of this humble woman, Nyanama, to bring forth fruits for God's church and God's people. In the gospel that we have this evening, on three occasions, Jesus is telling us one single phrase. And this is his pet phrase all through the gospels. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Every one of us has our anxieties, our worries, our problems. What will happen? How are things going to move? And the like. The future is so uncertain. And when things are uncertain, there's always fear, anxiety, worries that accompany us every day. And the Lord is telling us this evening, and maybe particularly telling the new team this evening, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And do not be afraid. Why? For a single reason. Always be conscious of one single fact that God Abba Father loves you, cares for you, is concerned about you and holds you in his bosom. And if you march ahead with this consciousness in your heart, no fear can ever deter you from doing what you have to do, what God wants you to do. Jesus goes to the extent of giving us two very Beautiful examples. Are you not more than the sparrows that we see around us? Surely all of us know what it means. Are you not assured that God Abba Father loves you, cares for you, concerned about you? And therefore, three times he repeats for us today, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And this is a powerful message mother and her team can take forward in your hearts today. Do not be afraid of the uncertainties of life. Do not be afraid of the challenges that will confront you. Rather, keep your focus on God Abba Father and his great love for you and all your fears will disappear. All good things will come to an end, yes and must come to an end. And today our hope for you and for all your sisters is this, that when those things come to an end, you will be able to say, now we can live happily ever after. What began once upon a time must carry on happily ever after. Sisters, may God bless each and every one of you and all the sisters of your congregation. And may God continue to infuse in each of you his spirit of love, his spirit of hope, and above all, his spirit of service, that we may love, serve each other, and we may continue hoping in the goodness of God in our life. Amen.